So the, um, it, the SP with internal restricted surface uh, is the kind of an SP where um, the surface of the SP uh, particles that can retain on the light is somewhat restricted, somewhat restricted uh, by the, its access is restricted to analytes with only specific size. And this is mostly for extracting compound from biological samples where we could have very large molecules such as proteins, but we don't want them to retain on our, um, on our sorbent in the SP. And one of the possibilities is to combine the size limitation and then the actual interactions in the SP. And here are two different phases, one where the large, uh, not targeted uh, molecules can't enter the pores of this, um, of these solid phase uh, particles, but the smaller analytes can, and these analytes then can bound to the, uh, to the surface of the, particles that is then interacting with them. And therefore the small analyte molecules can give the interactions while the large can't because the large can't just uh, access this um, internal surface. Another possibility is here down where the uh, analyte first needs to uh, permeate through a network uh, which also then restricts the molecule based on size. And then when it has kind of diffused through this layer, uh, this hydrophilic outer face, then it can interact with the hydrophobic inner face. So this means that it uh, needs to be uh, having some properties to actually permeate through this hydrophilic outer face. Um, but then it, after that, it should also give the hydrophobic uh, interactions with the interface. So again, the possibility to differentiate between uh, different compounds. Um, now, a bit about the technical details of SB. Um, different kinds of SB tubes can be used. And the size of these tubes really depends on which kind of samples we have, how concentrated these samples are, and how large volumes of these samples we do have. So the smallest ones are a few, a few tens of milligrams, and the largest can be about 10 grams or so. So that means that the solid material in these tubes has this weight. And the amount of organic matter that then they can retain, again, uh, varies from a few milligrams to up to a gram, depending on how large uh, sorbent material you have. It's very important that you would not choose too small bed weights. So this means that to, you would use too little sorbent material because then it might be that we are saturating the surface. This means that the full surface of the solid particles is, is, is retaining the maximal amount of material that it can retain. And as a result, uh, analyte molecules that come in addition just flow through the cartridge because there aren't any free spots on the surface of the sorbent to actually retain the analyte molecules. So if we choose too small bed size, then it's possible that our uh, that we lose some of our analytes simply because we saturate the the sorbent. So we shouldn't use too small. But we don't want to use too large either. There are two reasons for that. The first one is that they are more costly. This is practical. But the other one is that we also need a specifically large uh, volume of the eluting solvent to actually pass through this cartridge. So if we have a very large uh, bed weight, like 10 grams, for example, then we need for elution also 40 to 100 milliliters of the eluting solvent. So this means that uh, we actually might not concentrate our samples really if we have a diluted samples and they are little, we just need to use too large elution solvent volumes to actually get anything out from that column. 
so choosing this right tool is is rightly is very important. Um, there is a possibility for the saturation, as I said before, by meaning that uh, the solvent is not uh, capable of retaining any more of the analyte or any other material, meaning that the solvent is fully um, has exhausted its cap capacity to retain any material. And this can be if we have very concentrated samples, we have a lot of analytes, or we have very matrix rich samples, and the matrix is also at least partially retaining in the on the cartridge, on the solid phase on the cartridge. Or if the matrix is from bonding too strongly, this is also a possibility. Um, or we have just simply wrongly chosen the amount of the solvent that we need in our SP. So the solutions to these would be either to in, increase the solvent amount or to use an SP which has a has better selectivity for our analyte so that matrix would not compete for the surface and we wouldn't need to worry about matrix components actually um, saturating the surface of the solid phase uh, material. Uh, yeah, or just to take less of the sample if possible. Um, here is an example of the technical suggestions how to carry out an SB. And it's very similar to the, it's based actually on what we saw before, a general guideline. It starts by conditioning the solvent. This, this essentially means wetting of the solvent, which um, is followed by an equilibration. And this equilibration means that the solvent is prepared for this weak solvent that our sample will be in. And then we, and so that it would not directly uh, flow through without being um, actually retained by the solvent. So that's why we need this step between wetting and actually loading sample. Then we can load the sample and we can follow this by a small volume washing with something that has weak elution power. This means that our analytes would not be eluted by the solvent, but uh, some of the um, some of the matrix components maybe, or just to kind of get the sample fully out from the cartridge as well, um, the the sample that was not retained by the solvent, and then this is what is followed by actually eluting the analyte molecules with a strong solvent now, something that is able to fully extract the analyte molecules from the solvent and get them out into a collection while that they put down here. So when we want to compare now the solid phase and um, extraction and the liquid-liquid extraction, then um, SP usually uses much less of organic solvent, but it is far, almost comparable to what is possible with the uh, liquid liquid extraction in the tube. So, with this, it's a kind of a similar. SP allows to concentrate the sample still more compared to the liquid liquid extraction in the tube. Uh, liquid liquid extraction, as such, could give similar concentration ratios. Uh, uh, the shortcoming of SP compared to liquid-liquid extraction is that in SP, the sample action needs to be fully dissolved. Uh, if liquid-liquid extraction in the tube can also work with slurries or suspensions or something like that. Uh, however, SP is considered more specific. We have more uh, possibilities to choose the chemistry of the solid phase, so this can be uh, sometimes very, very advantageous in the um, selectivity point of view. And SP can also be automated. And there are SPs, for example, which can be run in parallel with the liquid chromatography, meaning that uh, the process is fully, fully automated and the uh, human person or analyst doesn't have to do um, during the routine analysis really anything. Um, in to prepare the sample. So this um, considerably reduces the time spent on sample preparation, as well as uh, also makes it more robust to small errors. Um, 
however, liquid liquid extraction in a tube is also it's not really automated, but it's uh, also not so super work intensive anymore. So both of them are actually very nice methods, and and the final choice depends on the on the sample as well as the um, actually how this analysis are conducted on everyday basis. So for example. If water analysis are done on daily basis with an HPLC, then maybe having an automated SB directly before the HPLC analysis is one of the most uh, economically and time-wise reasonable solutions, while for the analysis of food stuff where SB wouldn't really work because we are mostly having slurries rather than real um, solutions, SB in the tube is a very, very convenient uh, version. Um, in addition to liquid liquid extraction and SP, which are by far the most uh, common methods, there are actually two more methods that uh, um, are worth mentioning. And one of them is solid phase micro extraction, or in short, SPME. And uh, this is actually somewhat similar to SPE, but it can, it, the difference is that it is mixed with the sample directly in the, in the sample's kind of natural form. So sample is not introduced to the solvent, but solvent is introduced to the sample, then collected somehow, and then taken for the analysis. And uh, it can be used both for kind of in-lab analysis, but it can be used also for in situ sample collections uh, combined with extraction. So how is that done? Um, in case of SPME, the solid phase is made of a type where we can collect this, um, these particles from the medium uh, very nicely. And some of the simplest parts are where we have a fiber that is covered with the material that can extract the analytes from the sample. And then we have this fiber in the needle, for example, and we can move the fiber in and out from the needle. And uh, we can put this fiber into the environment from which we want to collect the sample. And uh, we have that fiber there in the sample a fixed period, period of time. We take it out and we analyze this then with our method. This is very uh, common, for example, in gas chromatographic analysis, where this um, fiber uh, stops the analyte molecules and then in the injector they are dissolved and then analyzed with a gas chromatography. Another possibility is that this solvent that is um, extracting the compounds is in or, or in the inner walls of the tube and the sample is flowing through this tube. Or that the vessel material is covered with the, um, with the material that is, ex uh, that is able to extract the analyte molecule. Also stirrer bars or discs can be used, uh, can be covered with the solvent so that the analytes would be extracted, could be extracted when steering the sample, for example. And it's also possible to just add suspended particles. And these suspended particles can then either be filtered out, for example, and then extracted. And sometimes even if there are if slurry, the sample is originally in a slurry, this would not be a problem. Um, what is also worth mentioning here uh, is that uh, this analysis can also be done quantitatively when the material and the, the um, and the times of the extractions are very closely controlled. So it's also possible for quantitative analysis, not only for qualitative analysis. And largely, what is also important for liquid samples is dialysis. And dialysis uh, can be used both for anal analyzing and concentrating small molecules as well as large molecules. And it's a very uh, important method in uh, different biological 
uh, sample analysis. So, for example, uh, separating proteins and small metabolite molecules from biological sample or, or biochemical sample. And the heart of dialysis is a dialysis cell. So this is essentially like a kind of a tube, but this tube has um, a possibility for molecules of specific size to move through. So usually it has a higher molecular weight cutoff, which means that if the molecules are larger, they won't th move through the, they can't move through this tube material. Um, the sample is placed into the tube, the ends are closed, and then this tube is put into, uh, for example, the spilled water solution. What starts happening is that the concentration of the sample, so sam con sample concentration in the tube, is very high compared to the concentration in this distilled water, for example. And, and there is a like, large concentration gradient between the um, on the two sides of the membrane that is forming this dialysis column. And the compounds which are small enough to pass through this column material are then starting to diffuse through the uh, membrane, so through the column material. So this means that uh, usually large molecules such as proteins stay in the column while smaller molecules diffuse out from the column. So if we want to analyze proteins and not have any interferences from the smaller molecules, then we would analyze after the specified time, the sample that is left in the dialysis cell. But if we are more interested in the metabolites, for example, then we would take the solution that is outside of the dialysis cell for our analysis. This was, these were the most important methods for the analysis of liquid samples, and we will uh, also look at the methods for solid sample preparation.